thank you very much for the uh, – well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, to be able to speak. Um, some of you know the circumstances that brought me here. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much, but just a brief personal comment. Uh, some of you know my mother – and my parents, Charles and Evelyn Delamater, my mother uh, had a heart attack last Sabbath and died on Monday. The calling hours were on Thursday. The funeral was yesterday. And uh, Mr. Miller performed the service. It was a very special and meaningful service. Um, and I might allude to just a mention or two of the topic, although I'm on a slightly different topic. So um, I've spoken with some of you. I appreciate those of you who recognize me. I moved away from Ohio a long time ago. But um, when I come back, I, I still feel like I'm home, and, and I do appreciate those of you who've already spoken to me. My, to- my topic this afternoon for the sermonette, and um, I am pin- I'm pinch hitting for a pinch hitter, I think. My, my son, Scott, was asked to do the sermonette today, and he... Uh, was taken. He's been fighting something, so he's not well today. Couldn't make it, or he would have loved to be here. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm giving you a message that that uh, I've, I've had it been worked on and delivered before. But the topic was actually mentioned in the prayer, our opening prayer. Uh, there's a word that we're going to talk about is the word comfort. There are two books in the Bible in the Old Testament that actually are based on the Hebrew word. Well, not the, not the book itself, not necessarily the topic in its entirety, but the names of two of the books in the Old Testament are actually based on the Hebrew word for comfort. Uh, may not be the books that you would have guessed, but the Hebrew word for comfort is the word Nahum, which is one of the minor prophets. You, you can find it if you look hard enough. It's there. And the other, which Nahum, as far as I know, means comfort, and there's another book that means comfort of the Lord, which is Nehemiah, or Nehemiah, as we would say it. There's also a city that you probably are familiar with. It's interesting, when um, Handel wrote his oratorio, Messiah, he, if you listen to Messiah, it opens with a musical introduction, and then you have a, a, the tenor comes on, and the first word in Handel's Messiah is the word comfort. It says, comfort ye my people. And it, it's the story of the Messiah. And I think sometimes we don't always look at the gospel as being a message of comfort. But that's where Handel went. When he started the started his oratorio, he started with the word comfort. Comfort ye my people. And interestingly, if we extend this introduction, just... To fill in, I'm not trying to just fill you in with trivia, but this I think it's meaningful when you stop and, and appreciate what's in Scripture. The city where Jesus began his ministry was, whether we call it a city or a town or township or something, was a city of comfort or Capernaum, or the city of Nahum. Caper means like a town or a village maybe. It may not have been what we would consider much of a city, but the village of Nahum, and if you read commentaries, there's disagreement on whether the prophet Nahum was ever there, but when Jesus began his public ministry, he began it in the city of Capernaum, which is the city of comfort. So I'm giving this as introduction to my topic, which is the, the topic of comfort, and we, and we heard in the opening prayer about comfort, comforting those who are sick or ill, or those of us who are grieving the loss of loved ones, whether it's someone we've lost as recently as this week or someone we've lost in past months or years. There's a, a process that we that we have to go through. It's not easy. Um, I do appreciate those, again, who are here. Uh, it's, 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 it's been this, this trip in, in experiencing this, it's been a, a time of sorrow and laughter. We've had, including my father, who many of you know, I've seen him cry, I've seen him laugh. And I think that's part of the healing process, and we're working through it. We have a lot of family in town, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the personal details, but it's, it's, it's sort of the time that we are in right now is a time that um, this seems, seems to be uh, a good topic to cover. Um, I'm going to start with a, a scripture from the book of Nehemiah, and I'll tell you a personal story. I won't go into all the details, but there was a time 
a number of years ago when I was going through a personal trial. And I had a coworker, not a church member, at least not affiliated with any of the churches of God that we know of, but a religious person knew I was having a difficult time. And as he walked by, he quoted a scripture to me from the book of Nehemiah. So we're going to turn to Nehemiah chapter 8. And I'll, I'll, get, I'll start uh, with um, verse 10. And again, the book of Nehemiah has a lot of material in there, and um, I, I, we're not going to review all of it, but this was a time when the Jews had returned and were re, had rebuilt the walls to the city through much adversity, and then they discovered uh, God's word, God's law, and they were reading it to the to the um, it was being read to them. It's actually on the first day of the seventh month, which is the Feast of Trumpets. If we look at verse one, it says, "The when the seventh month came, month came the children of Israel were in their cities." Um, Ezra the priest brought the law of the Lord before the congregation in verse two, uh, verse three. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate. So. People stood and listened. People who had never heard God's word read to them. They stood and they heard it read. And they realized that they weren't living up to what was in God's word. And they were grieved by that. They were mourning. They were sad because they realized they weren't doing what they, as people that God would, had, had dealt with, uh, they, weren't, they weren't doing what God re- expected of them. So let's, let's, look at, let's look at verse 9. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, and it, it may be, I've seen some commentary say, that it may be that uh, as, they, as the word was being read, because they didn't have the opportunity to have microphones in front of them to amplify their voices, or it may have been a matter of translation so they could understand. Uh, they, they, they had people... Levites there to teach the people what was being said. And they said, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. It was a holy day. It was a feast day. Uh, not, not really a, 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 time, a day of mourning. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And they, again, they weren't weeping because they didn't like what they were hearing. They weeped, wept because they understood where they were falling short. Verse 10, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow. And this is what, and then the next phrase is what my friend at work told me one time when I was having a difficult time. He said, remember, Dave, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So that was a word of encouragement. And I remembered when he said it, I, at the, that moment, I thought, I know that's in in scripture, and I couldn't remember exactly which verse. It's one of these verses. I, I, it's one of my committed to memory verses that I have in mind now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we, we live in a world when people are seeking joy, they often do it in the wrong way. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I picked up the local newspaper today and looked at the front page article, and it, it talked about the number of deaths from drug overdoses in Stark County over the la- each of the last few years. Forty or fifty people died from drug overdoses each year. They're perhaps seeking joy, but they're looking in the wrong place and they're doing it the wrong way. And as human beings, I think we all have a tendency to do that. We'll, we'll go off and come up with some, something that we think is going to make us happy and give us joy. And in the long run, it, it doesn't always work. Usually it doesn't if it's not God's way. It might be a temporary thrill, but it's not going to give us lasting joy. So it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And uh, let me, there's one more phrase here that I want to want to be sure I, I, I spot. Um, okay, right, it's in verse 12. I'll read verse 11. So the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and send portions and rejoice greatly. Because, and this is telling us why they rejoiced, because they understood the words that were declared to them. They had truth that was being revealed to them, and they appreciated it, and they valued it. 
And again, that's the joy doesn't come from getting high on drugs or alcohol or, or some other uh, worldly uh, pursuit that I'm sure Satan would want us to pursue. But it comes from understanding and then doing something about what we understand. So it said, the joy of the Lord is your strength, and it's because they understood that they that they had that they were able to have that joy because of the the, the knowledge that they had. Let's let's continue again the. the Topic again for today is the the idea of comfort, and so um, comfort. Well, in, in the, again, let me just mention in the the message yesterday, it was pointed out to to our family that um, what what sustains us in how we keep moving forward, the how and the why of moving forward. I hope I'm not tearing, giving away this the sermon today, but the, is the idea of hope. We have hope, and that's really really what's what's there that that's what keeps us those of us who really understand what god is working out in our lives we have that hope and that helps us move forward let's turn over to second corinthians chapter one and let's let's start with verse three second corinthians chapter one and verse three Blessed be the God and Father of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. And, and, and the question you, you could ask, let's stop for a second, why does God comfort us? It's the, we're going to read the answer in just a moment. I'm not going to keep you in suspense, but think about it. He comforts us that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So comfort isn't just just for us to selfishly uh, uh, take in, and it's not about each individual person, but it's, I mean, it is, it is, we are to be comforted, but then we are to take that comfort. And when the opportunity comes up, the time and the occasion, then we pass it along and comfort others. So God comforts us so that we may be able to be comforted. So God does comfort, and that it is having hope and having understanding is comforting to those of us who understand God's purpose, uh, God's purpose for each of us, everybody in this room, all the loved ones that we uh, that we still have a chance to see, and all of the loved ones that we look forward to seeing in the future. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. So the the tough part for many of us is that uh, comfort means that we've suffered. And uh, in this lifetime, we're not promised zero suffering. We are promised a, 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 perhaps a vast amount of comfort. So the comfort is what we can, can appreciate. We, we don't... Uh, those who live their lives hoping to just live a life of ease and never have a problem and never have a trial and never have a, a, a sorrow are, are, are approaching it wrong. Um, verse 6, now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation. This is when he say we, that was uh, Paul talking. If we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we, which we also suffer. And sometimes we do that. We see other people set an example. They lived through a tough trial, and you say, well, they made it through, and we can make it, all, make it through also. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Uh, verse 7, and our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation or the comfort. So it's, it's not the avoidance of suffering that we can expect in this lifetime or that we should be seeking, but it's, it's the, the consolation, uh, the comfort, the comfort that we can share with one another and the comfort that we can pass along. Uh, let's turn back to Matthew chapter 25. And look at verse 34. So this is... Uh, not a complete comprehensive answer. Um, these are, these are, I'm sharing with you some thoughts. It's not, I, I can't say this is the exhaustive coverage of the, com- of the topic. I'm just giving you some thoughts on this topic of comfort. This is a, one approach when you can think about how do we comfort others. 
Verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So there, there is a kingdom being prepared. It's there and waiting and ready. Um, verse, verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me food. That's how you comfort a hungry person. If somebody's hungry. You, you give them food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I, I walked in here today. I said, is there water? <laughs> there was water. Uh, I should have asked for food. Uh, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I understand there will be food food later. So, I was a stranger, and you took me in. Now, I, I walked into this room, and to some of you in this room, I may seem like a stranger. That you know, you, for, for me, this is... My hometown church, even though I've never been in my hometown congregation, even though I've never been in this building before. But there are some people here who've known me since I was a whole lot younger. There's some of us here that we look at each other and say, we remember each other when we had dark hair or more hair. Uh, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. So these are these are comforting in some ways involves looking at what the other person needs and filling the need that the other person has. If 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 uh, somebody's naked and you give them water, that's not comforting them. If they're naked and you give them clo- clothing, that does. And so it, it's. Uh, I, I think we can read between the lines here that what that means is you have to know other people and you have to know what they are lacking and what's missing. And that's how you can comfort. If somebody is lonely or hungry or uh, in need of, of somebody to talk to or somebody to pray for them, then that's where we need to get to know and care for one another. And we can show that, that love by meeting those needs. Verse 37, then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? See, they're they're taking this too literally. Lord, we didn't see you hungry or thirsty or naked or in prison. We would have come if we'd known it was you. And that's the, that's the next part of the message is um, we, didn't, we didn't see you in, in, in need. When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer to them and say, they... they they're thinking, well, if we knew the king had problems, we would have gone to the king and we would have just done whatever we could to help. And the king said, well, answer and saying to them, assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So it's not just about the king. It's about looking at the brethren. Now, what um, if, if we look at this, the, perhaps read it the wrong way, you might think, Okay, now it's my job to figure out which one of the brethren is the least and go and meet his or her needs. And, and that also could be a slippery slope. Um, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't say you have to figure out which one's the least. I think the implication is everybody from the king all the way to whoever might be the least, which isn't your job to figure out, but anybody who's one of your brethren, we should be aware. You, you can't necessarily always help everybody, but you can help and you can, you can meet needs. And by doing that, you can share the comfort that comes to you. So comfort, we receive comfort and then we give comfort. And we give it, the focus here would be on giving it to the brethren. It uh, doesn't mean we can't cover, comfort the loved ones that, that are also suffering. Uh, my family is grieving. Um, as, as it turns out today, my, my son was, would love to have been here with you. He couldn't make it. He was, he was quite sick this morning. And so uh, I'm here. He would have been here otherwise. The rest of my family, unfortunately, is not here today. But that's, that's the, the thought is that rather than focusing on the least of the brethren, look at, look at the needs of the brethren that, that you meet and you talk to. Um, maybe by implication, you should be reaching out and getting to know and get acquainted. You know, if you weren't going to stay for the potluck, stay. You know, if, you, if there's not enough food and you're all hungry, well, okay, then somebody's going to have to plan better next time. But 
the uh, you know the, the idea is to be here and to to, to love and get to know one another. Um, the the um, I wasn't going to turn to it, but I think I will just to, in conclusion to to wrap up uh, Matthew five and verse four. I wasn't sure how um, intense this message would be, but but it was. Um, I think I'm going to make it through. Um, Matthew 5 and verse 4, blessed, and that I, it, I think that implies a certain degree of happiness even, are they that mourn. And you, it's, it's hard to understand, but uh, we were in, in, a, in a time of mourning. Um, I was able to see my father over the last uh, few days and other family members kept come together, and we could reminisce, we could laugh, we could tell stories. And it wasn't we, that we were laughing because we didn't care. Uh, we were laughing because we were together and enjoyed each other and some of the things. And we're trying to comfort and strengthen my dad. But blessed are they that mourn, those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Uh, we've had some of the people in the room were able to uh, uh, call on the family at the visitation or the this ceremony um, in, the, in the last couple of days. And I do appreciate those of you who were able to make it. Some of you said you couldn't make it. I realize we had some pretty serious weather on Thursday night. And uh, so that some who would have come were not able to. But um, it, it, it was comforting to be able to have uh, so many who stopped by the other day to visit. And it was comforting to see them connect with my father, who has been in this community for such a long time. And uh, it's unfortunate that with various church issues and people going their different ways that we've lost track of each other. It was comforting to see that that didn't matter at this uh, this time when people did uh, come and see my family. So for those of you who I have not met, um, I, I do appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, I may be able to stay for a little while after services. My, my uh, family is assembled elsewhere, so I will not stay too long, but I will I will stay. Well, we'll see. I, I, no commitments here. If I, if I end up here for two hours, don't don't hold me to that. But I, I do appreciate the opportunity. I, it's 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 a wonderful to see so many uh, people that I've known for a long time and haven't talked to. I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I do appreciate Mr. Miller's message yesterday. It was very uh, helpful, at least to me. I don't know if the whole family got it, but it was very meaningful to those of us who did. So uh, I I look forward to seeing uh, some of you after services.